Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pippin Racing. In this episode, we're doing the part two on working on the TZ250. We're working on the Ignitech ignition and showing you guys how we got it all wired up and also making the backing plate to get it running. So, I hope you enjoy the episode, guys. All right, guys, so we've been working on the TZ250 and working on the Ignitech ignition. It's been quite a mission to get this Ignitech working. When we received it, we received the units and all the wires pretty much coming out from the unit and no connectors. So we had to find out where all the wires were going and connect them up to the power valve, connect them to the taco, connecting them to the stator. We eventually got all the wires connected and got spark out of the bike we got the bike fired up but when it fired up it was backfiring missing and carrying on we were back and forth to ignitech and explaining what was going on they couldn't really understand or tell us which way to go what we have found out to do with help from other guys that have put the ignis this ignitech on their bikes Okay, so we had to make a backing plate. So did away with the standard backing plate with the rotor and pick up. And what do we needed to do there, Dad? So the reason we needed a, a different backing plate is when we put a strobe light on the timing, um, we, we needed it firing 20 degrees before top dead center. Now, this particular motor turns opposite to most two strokes. It actually turns clockwise. Most of the other two strokes, the, the flywheel is actually running anti-clockwise. So when we put our timing light on it, we needed that marks to be basically lined up. That's about roughly 20 degrees. And what we had was the, the thing was firing around about there, which is way, way retarded. So uh, we couldn't get any acceleration, no power, of course. The thing would start, but that's it. So when we checked our the original stator and the timing marks and the distance between the, the, uh, the lobes and pickups on the flywheel and our timing mark on the genuine stator, we were roughly 25 degrees out on our timing. So the only way to alter that, you can't alter that on the computer or in the ignition, you can only alter it by just a few degrees, not 25 like we needed. Uh, so we had to make a new backing plate. We've, we now put the, um, uh, the, the motor on top dead centre using a dial indicator through the plug, put it on top dead centre and then worked out where our, our pickup and lobe is on the flywheel compared to the pickup point of triggering. So when we got that in the correct position, um, it's given us then correct timing and the thing started running properly. So unfortunately we can't use the standard uh, Yamaha ignition, which we would, uh, backing plate, which we would have preferred to do but it just wasn't possible. So now we've got proper adjustment on our timing. You can see the backing plate. Uh, we had a friend machine that up and uh, have now got adjustment, plenty of adjustment either way and uh, room to alter the ignition. Once we got the backing plate made up and got it firing in the right spot, we got a new coil so uh, this was supplied from Ignitech, so it's a, um, a high output coil. So our, what we've done on this particular bike is that we've put a, uh, a different battery system on it. Originally these had a, a battery that sat up in the fairing. Um, that was uh, way, way past its use by. So we ended up setting up a battery in under the tank and wiring so what we've got is power and earth coming to it comes up to the front here and we've put a an ignition switch like a 
a switch that powers it up. And so from there, we've taken power to the various things that we need uh, to run, so like the taco. Um, so we'll point out the wiring here as to what we've got. Unfortunately, the, the unit didn't come with any connectors on it and we weren't keen on removing our genuine Yamaha connectors. We wanted to have the original part so they connected correctly. So we went ahead and basically made new plugs onto the Ignatech wiring for, that's the power valve set up and that was the TACO plugs. So they're original Yamaha plugs and so we were keen to stay that way. Just makes it a bit neater and easier. Um, probably our difficulty is um, finding out what colours went where. Um, there's not many of these units been fitted to uh, to model bikes like this. Um, so we went searching on the internet to find basic colouring for what Ignatech have done previously on models like um, RZs, uh, also TZR road bikes. Most of these ignitions have been set up for four-stroke road bikes, some race bikes, but generally four-stroke. So having it set up for two-stroke shouldn't really be that difficult, providing you know where everything goes. And that was probably our dilemma. Yeah, that was hard to find out where everything went. And it's taken a little bit of time to get it sorted but we've been able to make the taco work correctly, the power valve to work correctly. So what we'll do, I'll show you some of the program and how we've set up our power valve graphs and ignition curve. So let's go through that now. Okay, so this is the Ignitec program running on, on the laptop we're using. Now we're starting off in miscellaneous here and we've just gone through, put the limiter where we think needs to go, um, 13,500 they normally rev out to. We've switched off multi-functions input, one, two, three, and on four we've actually just left the kill switch on and then the other ones we've just turned off. Set, second advance chart is 13, seven, 13 and a half thousand. So then we go to the next icon, which is the bike. Now we've put this on special setting and the polarity pickup we've put on plus where some people have been putting on auto, we've seen, but we've gone to plus. The taco meter output is two pulses per revolution for this bike. Then we're running on one lobe on the synchronized method and the both polarities. So the next, was there anything else on this one here? We've got a We've also done two ignitions per revolution. Okay, on the next icon, we're going to the sensors and we have just put it on no for the load sensor, but then the servo motor, we've ticked the servo because it obviously has the, the power valve. Okay, the next icon is advanced maps. So we're running up to 25 degrees. This is just the base setting for us. Um, a lot of these ignitions, they just taper them off as the revs go up. You can see there, we're from sort of seven to eight thousand. We start to taper off the advance, yeah, and bring it back to nearly zero. At uh, we'll we'll fine tune that when we actually put the bike on the dyno, and that's one of the things we'll be altering to check our performance. All right, so the next icon, we go to power out, and we've just ticked off, and power out, off, on one, two, and three, so all off there. And so the next icon goes to servo motor, servo, 
and we've put in our own sort of mapping for that. Now this standard setting on the Yamaha, this power valve just starts at about 8,000 and then just opens immediately. And it's from full shut to full open at 8,000. Yeah. With, with this ignition we can uh, put a slight step in that and take it up to say nine or nine and a half thousand so it opens a bit more gradually. And that's something that will have to be proved on the dyno as to what it's going to be. Yeah. So we'll, we'll alter that once we get on the dyno and, and then have ridden it on the track. But the beauty of the ignition is that we can change these things. That's probably the advantage. That is the advantage. You can plug this into your bike running and change it. So, uh, okay, so the next icon is gear. And we've just ticked no on that. And I think that was it for that. Yep, and then race and test. So... We've put tachometer RPM at 5,000 and servo serve at 500 there. So, okay, what we'll do now, guys, is just show you the bike running and we'll plug the Ignitech into the computer and show you how it looks on the, on the computer here. Okay, guys, we're going to get the bike a fire up. So, switching... Switching it on. Power valve working there. That'll get it into gear. Up onto the starter. enjoyed the episode yeah man that was a mission getting that Ignitech working on this bike when we finally got there I've got to give a big shout out to Neil Gray over in Perth and also Mark Hatch up in Queensland helping us out getting the Ignitech sorted also my dad Dean obviously doing a lot of the wiring and working out on what's what needs to happen to get the power valves the taco and stuff working so 
Hope you enjoyed the episode. Make sure you like and subscribe and send any comments. If you need help with something, we're, we're keen to help you guys out getting some bikes on the track. So cheers, guys.